Hello, and thank you for joining us here for another segment on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Janssen Immunology has a a track record of defining and redefining the treatment of immune-mediated disease. Now, with a systemic, evidence-driven, pathways-based approach, the company is leading the industry in four significant pivots, which our guest this evening, Dr. David Lee, is going to discuss. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Neil. It's a pleasure to join you. Well, obviously, you are associated with Janssen. Give us a little bit of your background and talk about your role at Janssen briefly, if you would. Well, I have the privilege of leading uh, immunology R&D at Janssen. Uh, My background is trained in both as a physician and as a PhD in immunology. Now, I mentioned that Janssen Immunology is poised to to redefine the treatment of immune-mediated diseases. Why is there a need to redefine what we're already doing? So it's very important that we redefine uh, treatments uh, for many patients with immune disease. Mm -hmm. You know, our vision is to restore health for all patients with immune disease. And from an efficacy standpoint, this means achieving durable remission for all patients. Today, our state of the art is that despite the advances that we've had in treatment options, for the diseases we're targeting, less than 10% of patients achieve durable remission. We've said otherwise, while, the, while many of the current advanced therapies produce a robust response, the vast majority of patients just still aren't well. A couple of examples, just take rheumatoid arthritis, for instance. It impacts 1% of our population, characterized by daily unrelenting joint pain, profound fatigue. Now, advanced therapies have had impact in rheumatoid arthritis, yet even these, at best, achieve 50% clinical responses and less than half of people. Mm-hmm. Or said otherwise, less than half gets half better. Our goal is to, is again, remission for all patients. And so helping people not just to feel better, but to feel good Uh, is so important. This new approach, is that part of these four pivotal areas that uh, Janssen has engaged in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, thinking, uh, why don't we uh, go over the four areas? So our four areas that we've really pivoted from is from immune suppression to immune homeostasis as a goal. Uh, And we can unpack that more a bit later if it's helpful. Second is opening the aperture of, of the disease we focus on from six disease areas, diseases historically, now to more than 20 uh, in our portfolio. Okay. Okay. And third, switching from single treatment paradigms, which really are injectable monotherapies that have been directed against cytokines, to really using a full range of the modalities, including novel orals, novel um, combination therapies, as well as next-generation uh, targets that can be still done with injectable biologics. And I just really want to underscore that fourth pivot, pivoting from really a treatment response to full remission for patients. I heard you mention durable remission. I'm familiar with you know remission. Is durable just ongoing remission, staying in it a certain amount of time? Uh, absolutely. Uh, one of the vexing problems in, in for many patients has been, in, in, while there may be a really strong initial response, staying in response over years uh, has been a challenge. In fact, in some of the diseases, we, have, we see up to 50% of patients losing response after the first year or two alone. And what that means is patients then have needed to go on a next treatment or a next treatment and never achieve that long-lasting durable response. Now, obviously, wanting to cure patients or have patients in, as you say, durable remission for more and more uh, diseases, was that the, the natural progression that fueled these pivots, or was there something else? Both uh, near-term and long-term, we've been observing this, 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 uh, this challenge in reaching full remission. And, and, you know, as our insights into immune science have progressed, our our the bar has also, we've also been able to raise the bar with uh, more and more advanced treatment options. And it's really that long-term view uh, and, and, and our uh, profound uh, advances in, in our increase in the setting of immune science that are underlying this uh, raising the bar, as I said, from a treatment response to true remission. Part of that's arisen from the uh, insights. And again, I, I would underscore there's just been an explosion in our insight into human immune function. And one of the major pivots there has been from a view that the immune system really existed in a state of overactivation, if you will, almost like a light switch in patients with autoimmune disease, to realizing that instead the immune system in health sits in a state of immune homeostasis or balance. 
between what are now known as activating mechanisms and the real insights over the last decade have been into the number of counter-regulating mechanisms that exist in the immune system. You can kind of think of that like accelerators and brakes, and it's the balance that is immune health, and when that's out of balance, that's when you get disease. And so the, the, that has translated into our approach where we no longer seek to suppress the immune system. It's not an on and off switch, mm -hmm. right? And all this, the challenges that come with immune suppression, rather identifying where are those accelerators and brakes out of balance and having the right mechanisms and new treatments that, that gently either back off the accelerator or tap on the brake as needed. Has this exploded research and trial efforts? I, obviously, you're going to have uh, a lot more people involved in trials, a lot more different types of uh, patients and, and candidates for these trials. Yeah, Neil, great, great topic. And indeed, it has. Accompanying these new insights, we've also now moved away from just focusing on diseases based on their anatomy. If you think of things like Crohn's disease or colitis in the gut or arthritis, what we now realize through this, uh, this immune homeostasis lens and this explosion of insight is that the same mechanisms are shared across many diseases. And so that's opened the opportunity. And, and by focusing, I should say, on understanding those mechanisms, it's really opened the aperture to the diseases that we're, we're tackling uh, in our trials. As I said, we historically focused on six diseases. Uh, now over 20 are in our, are in our, um, in our scope and that's been enabled by these new insights that we've uh, that we've been talking about. You know, often compounds are designed for one treatment, but turns out that they can be used for more than than a few treatments. Is that the case with any of uh, your compounds? I heard you mention rheumatoid arthritis earlier in our conversation. Is Trimphia one of those compounds that is uh, intended for arthritis? It is, and that's. It, it, uh, Trimphia is a, is a great example of what we call our pathways approach. So mm -hmm. moving away again from this singular disease focus to really focusing on diseases through the lens of the immune pathway. And Trimphia represents our IL-23 pathway investment. You know, that a lot of that started with historically we were targeting the, the, the common subunit of IL-23 called P40, which hits IL-12 and 23 with istokinumab. Uh, and insights from that program are, are Stellara. Um, and insights from that program led us to target singularly IL-23, which is Trimphia. And Trimphia yeah. was you know, the first IL-23 registered in psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. Uh, and, it's, uh, and we're continuing that momentum now with the development in Crohn's and, and ulcerative colitis and other diseases. So uh, building on those pathways insights and programs like our autoantibody pathways investment with our, our anti-neonatal uh, FC receptor, which naturally lowers uh, autoantibodies in in uh, immune diseases, and there's just a large number of immune diseases where autoantibodies are invoked. Uh, then, with that that program is our nipocalumab program that targets uh, or blocks the neonatal FC receptor, and with that one, mm -hmm. we're, we're investing in more than 10 diseases in parallel as an example of uh, the power of this pathways approach. Uh, we're also very enthusiastic about next generation orals in our portfolio and being able to inhibit uh, IL-23. We talked about Trimphia. Imagine uh, Trimphia in a pill as a next generation treatment and the opportunities that brings in. Great. Finally, are, are, are opportunities in combination therapies. So uh, for a number of diseases to break through that efficacy barrier that we're seeing, particularly in those more refractory patient populations, the ability to combine advanced therapies. And uh, we're, t we're leading there uh, with our combination therapies with uh, anti-L23 plus anti-TNF. I'm very enthusiastic about the opportunity that that represents. Well, if you would, give our listeners a, a web address where we can learn more. Sure, Neil. Uh, we've got a couple of websites that, uh, that listeners can go to. One is Janssen.com. Or another one is jnj.com. And Janssen is J-A-N-S-S-E-N.com, correct? 
That's correct. David, I appreciate you joining us here. Ten minutes, not a lot of time to discuss such a vast topic. Hopefully we'll have an opportunity to speak again in the future. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate the opportunity. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. David Lee. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio. Thank you.